for speech, you're going to have them hold certain postures, say, okay, take a deep breath and say, ah, which is phonation. So you're looking at the vocal cord sound production. And you can say, okay, e, o, or you can say, you can look at articulation. So you can say, pa, pa, pa. Pa, 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 pa. So that's an articulation in the lip. La, 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 articulation at the tongue. Ka, 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 articulation uh, at the uh, back of the tongue. And then you can have them do certain tasks, which for speech, the task will be certain sentences. Either those sentences that you know are sensitive to certain abnormalities. So for example, in an adductor spasmodic dysphonia, the abnormality is that every time there's a high pitch sound like E, they will drop it. So you say, okay, can you repeat after me? We eat eels every day. And the patient will be like, we eat eels every day. So you can see the spasmodic dysphonia coming out. Similarly, for uh, abductor dysphonia, when the vocal cords are not closing or for paralysis, they have a breathy sound and a very breathy H. So you can say, okay, can you repeat after me? Uh, he was hiding behind the house. And he was hiding behind the house and the H will be abnormal. So you can use certain sentences which will bring out certain abnormalities or you can just have them say simple sentences. Can you say after me, today is a sunny day in Omaha? And they said, today is a sunny day in Omaha. Or uh, the cat always hide under the couch when dogs were in the room. This I think is a stroke scale sentence uh, that I can use, okay? So similarly, the pattern is the same. You do a basic postures that you must check, basic actions that you must check, and then some specific or basic tasks that you must do.